In this demonstration, we'll test the incremental changes that we've made to the application by creating insurance claims on the vehicles for which policies have already been established. Before trying to deploy and run the application, it's a good idea to close any browser windows associated with the application first. Then click the green run button in the toolbar to begin the deployment. During deployment, I like to watch the progress by monitoring the runapp.log file. When it's complete, our application will launch in the default browser. So let's log into the Concordant Insurance application with username dmadmin and password demo.demo. Logging in takes us to the policy search page. That's our home page for this application. Let's right click on Fred Smith, because it has an end date in the future, and select Edit Policy. In the Edit Policy page, notice the tab group widget with the two tabs we configured for vehicles and claims. Select the Claims tab so we can add a claim, and then click the Add Claim button. This is our action flow that we created for the claim under the folder UI node in XEP Designer. The default caption bar is the label of the action flow. By default, the system name is calculated when we give it the label. However, when we type a different human-friendly label, the system name changes to match what you type. The trick is to enter the label first, then go back and edit the system name. So for incident date, let's enter 05-14-2014. For incident location, enter an address that you'll recognize on a map. I'm going to enter the location of the EMC Pleasanton, California campus. 6800 Cole Center Parkway, Pleasanton, California, 94566. For the claim amount, enter 5400. For vehicle, let's select a VIN number from the list that represents our Ford F-150. For the vehicle in motion attribute, this time let's check the box. Click the Create Claim button. Remember, that's the Action Flow's Finish button that we renamed to Create Claim. The system will work on that for a few moments, and then take us back to the Edit Policy page, refreshing the Claims query with the new claim and a claim status showing processing. So why did it go to the Edit Policy page? Well, that's because in the Edit Policy page, we configured the Add Claim button to invoke the AF Claim Policy 1 Action Flow Data Service Instance and when Go To to None, which means that it will open the AF Claim Policy Action Flow modal dialog and simply close the dialog when it's complete without navigating the user to another page and we configure the query that lists the claims to refresh when the AF claim policy underscore one dot success data service UI event was triggered. So that should close the loop on your understanding on that. Next I want to show you that somewhat confusing configuration where there are two different methods of invoking the AF claim policy dash one action flow instance. We just demonstrated the normal way. The other way is when a vehicle is already selected under the Vehicles tab. When a vehicle is pre-selected and then the Add Claim button is pressed, the Vehicle drop-down list widget only has the pre-selected vehicle in its list of choices. That's because the configuration told it to list items from the Vehicles query using the object ID of the selected item. So let's select the Vehicles tab and then select a vehicle from the list and then select the Claims tab again. This time, when you click the Add Claim button, the AF Claim Policy Action Flow opens the Action Flow dialog with the vehicle field already populated with the selected vehicle from a query. There's no need to continue adding this claim, so click the Cancel button to test that. It should take us back to the same Edit Policy page. To test that the context menu for claims is working, right-click on one of the claims and select View Claim. This should open the View Claims page. We could have also clicked on the incident date for that claim, which XCP Designer rendered as a hyperlink to the same page. Notice how the location map displays the location of the EMC campus in Pleasanton, California, adjacent to Bernal Avenue. When we're done looking at this, click the browser's back button. So select the Claims tab again, but this time right-click the claim and select Delete. Then 
click Yes on the confirmation dialog. Let's close the browser and look at what was created in the document and repository. Log into Document of Administrator and select the Concordant cabinet. Now select the Show All Objects and Versions option at the right, and you'll see subfolders for each claim that was created. If you deleted the claim, the folder will be empty. So that should give you an idea of how the application interacted with the document and repository. So close DA. Okay, now we're ready to work on implementing the claim handling details in the next section by using a work queue.